In Texas on 12:50 a.m. KDEI in Port Arthur and in Wisconsin at 91.3 FM WRMW in Peshtigo. Therefore, take up the whole armor of God so that you may be able to withstand on that evil day and having done everything to stand firm. And now, battle ready with Father Dan Rehill. Good day. Welcome to Battle Ready. Let's pray in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. My God, I believe, I adore, I hope, and I love thee, and I beg pardon for those who do not believe, do not adore, do not hope, and do not love thee. Amen. Amen. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. So today, I promise you, we had a very special guest coming on, and he's with us today. Welcome, Daniel O'Connor. Good to be back, Father. Thank you so much. So good to have you back. So... <clears throat> Monday, you posted a new uh, entry on your blog that I found to be fascinating and so on point and actually what a remarkable explanation for what could actually happen that would deceive so many people on the mm -hmm. planet. Mm -hmm. So first of all, where where did you come up with it? Does this just come to you in prayer or? Certainly in prayer, reading the catechism, but also looking at this you know as the as the catechism says looking into the signs of the times by the light of faith and just keeping an eye on what they've been priming us <clears throat> for for quite some time now i this was this notion of of these diabolical deceptions possibly with respect to aliens this has been not something i used to focus on at all really but then last year there started to be this strange uh, release of all sorts of news stories and what really got me concerned was actually something that Obama said uh, last year. He said, he, he basically implied that there probably are aliens and that when we discover them, this is going to bring about, I quote, new religions, is, was, is what he actually said. So this is, if that doesn't raise enormous red flags in your mind, I don't know what, what would. And for uh, this, and by the way, this is just me, Daniel Connor, saying this. I don't want to get father in trouble, but I am very concerned that that former president Obama, that he's going to be back in some way with some very problematic things. So when he says things like that, I take notice. It's funny because um, I don't remember him saying that. I, I must have hit my radar, but I do remember the Holy Father saying that if there were aliens, that he would baptize them. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And that, to me, was even more bizarre. That was a huge thing for like, me. Like, why also, are you yeah. even talking about such a thing? It doesn't, right. it, 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 it hasn't happened, so why even go down that road? Right. And the, the other thing that's kind of uh, interesting is, you know, if you go back to the series The X-Files, that was such an enormous show during the, de the heyday. I guess it was back mm -hmm. in the 80s. I think I was in college. Um, and the following was huge, right? And the tagline of that series was, the truth is out there. Mm -hmm. Isn't that interesting? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. <laughs> the truth is out there, but they're trying to link it to the aliens. Anyway, so this whole, if you haven't read it, you should go read it, uh, dsdoconnor.com. And uh, it all starts, at the title of this blog is, All the Devil Wants is a Little Dialogue. And so you, you go back to Genesis 3, and that mm -hmm. conversation the serpent has with Eve. And that's kind of where the whole thing starts. So right. um, take us through it. Yeah, the very first words that the devil spoke through, of course, a serpent was so subtle. And he didn't even directly say something. He doesn't begin by just outright giving this horrible blasphemy and heresy. He just begins by saying, did God really say? Sowing these seeds of doubt about what Eve should have known full well because she would have been told it from Adam. And what have we been told? Well, we don't converse with Adam like uh, Eve did, but we do have something called the Bible and the Catechism. And if you want to keep your head screwed on straight, if you want to keep your faith solid in the days ahead, where it's just going to get harder and harder to do just that, here's my very simple advice. Take the Bible and the Catechism at their word. Don't try to uh, sneak out of their teachings. Don't sit there wondering if, oh, well, maybe that's not actually true. Maybe it's changeable. Maybe it's reformable, as all these people in the Vatican even are saying today. Is, oh, that contraception and all that stuff, those, all that can change. No, it can't. Just stick with what it says, okay? And here's where it answers 
I, I wager. Here's where it answers the question very clearly for us. If you open it up to paragraph 356, I'm looking at my copy of the Catechism right now. It says, of all visible creatures, only man is able to know and love his creator. And there's so much more I could say about this. We won't have time to get into it today. But for me, that settles it. That's the catechism. And it's not even just the catechism, by the way. It's quoting Vatican II. So it's doubly magisterial. It's reiterating something that was already magisterium. So this is extremely important. Of all visible creatures. What does the catechism mean by visible? Well, incarnate. Angels, of course, are also rational. They, they can know and love God. But they're not visible. Of all physical, visible, incarnate creatures, human beings are the only ones. Absolute, there's no qualifications on that in the catechism. It just says we're the only ones who can know and love God. And from that, it follows that we don't have to sit around wondering how the supposed discovery of extraterrestrial intelligent life, aliens, in other words, how that's going to change our religion and our faith. It's not going to because it's not going to happen. And that's, for me, the end of the, the end of the story. It's not the end of the story on the in the world scene, unfortunately, though. I, but here's the, I've never heard anybody say this before. But but you mention uh, when Eve is taught, first of all, when God creates everything, all the animals, uh, He takes Adam and says, "Now you can you need to name these. The animals can't name themselves; they're mm -hmm. they're not rational creatures. So Adam gets to name all the animals, and that should." Adam should have been thinking something like, I'm different than them, and that's why I needed Eve, because none of these was good mm -hmm. for me. Right. Um, so then when the, the serpent approaches Eve and starts speaking to her, the, the bell that's should weird. be going off, yeah. going, how can a serpent speak to me mm -hmm. in, hu in human language? That doesn't make any sense, because we know only humans are rational creatures. Uh, so that should have been the warning. And then you kind of set up the whole premise in the first paragraph by saying acknowledging that certain sci-fi deceptions are either theologically philosophically or scientifically impossible is supremely important just like eve should have said this snake shouldn't be speaking to me there's something going on here and and the only other explanation could be it's either god or a demon because those are the other rational creature rational beings that exist right um so th then you kind of go down into the whole sci-fi realm and and why this is not probable or possible and that is really fascinating i think it's extremely important because i look at saint paul in scripture prophesying about the last days which i wager we're in that general vicinity of where he says that in those times people will have itching ears and they will accumulate for themselves teachers to suit their own likings turning away from the truth and wandering into wait for it myths myths so in the last times, we won't tolerate the people, he says, they won't tolerate sound doctrine anymore. They won't, like Christians always used to do, just open up the Bible and believe it, or open up the, the magisterium and believe it. They'll want instead myths. So what are our myths today? It's not Zeus and stuff anymore. We're never going to, I don't, I hope, I don't think we'll ever see society by and large wandering back into that. Today's myths are sci-fi. That's the modern myth. And... I'm not saying there's anything intrinsically wrong with that. I enjoy plenty of those things myself. But you got to understand, these are myths. These are not things that we should be forming our grasp of reality for, through the lens of. And they, when they traffic in these concepts of extraterrestrials and how these revelations about them changes everything, every now and then that can make for an entertaining work of fiction. But don't wander into that. Don't wander into those myths. That's what people are doing, though. With, mm -hmm. uh, and I and I think that the inspiration for this is that they're bored by the promises of Christ. It no longer excites the people. We, do, we don't we don't long for His reign and His triumph. We don't. They, we see the prophecies of Our Lady promising the triumph of her Immaculate Heart, and no one cares. They they just it's okay. That's boring. What's on what's what's on X Files next or something? So mm -hmm. this is what the devil's using. And yes, we should. If you think about what our faith is actually built upon, if you really drill down theologically and philosophically. It's largely built upon our own being honest with ourselves about when something impossible is happening. That's how we discern that what's transpiring is not natural. Mm -hmm. That's how we, that's how that's why we have faith in Christ. No, naturally, no one can raise himself from the dead. Jesus did that, so we know that he is divine. Of course, he has many other miracles, and there's many other proofs, but that's the greatest one. But the flip side is also true, and 
And you, of course, as an exorcist, you would know much more about this than I, but you can ascertain that something preternatural, perhaps, is going on, diabolical, if there's also things happening that have no rational, uh, natural explanation. So when that's, when that's happening, you don't dialogue, because you're not ready for that. And if you think you're ready to dialogue with the devil, that's just an extra reminder that you are not. You're not up to that task. I know I'm not, at least. So Eve, and, I'm not, I, and I did some research in this. I wish I had the details in front of me. I don't. But I'm certainly not the first to notice that it was wrong and weird that Eve started talking to a serpent. There were fathers of the church who pointed this out. You don't hear that anymore because people tend to write off Genesis as, a, as itself a myth, when in mm-hmm. fact, of course, it's, it's God's words, not a myth. But Eve, if she only refused dialogue, would have been fine. And we don't lament the fall, of course, because we pray the exalted of the Easter Vigil, oh, happy fault, but because, uh, of course, the redemption came about as a result eventually. But that doesn't mean the fall itself was a good thing. Eve never should have dialogued with that serpent. She did because she gave in to the temptation to do precisely that, which is what I speculate. I don't have a, I'm not a prophet here. I'm just looking at the signs of the time, seeing what they're preparing us for. What I speculate is that the devil wants to do that with the whole world. He, he already does it with all sorts of individuals when they themselves dialogue with him through a cult and, and new age stuff like Ouija boards. But what if he could do that with the whole world? What if he could give his own diabolical instructions on an institutional scale? That I believe is his goal. And he's got a number of ways he's gonna try to do that, but one of the, if not the most powerful ways he could do that is if the elite in the future claim, okay, we just made contact. We just made first contact. Here's what they're telling us. And it won't be aliens. It will be the devil. Right. Impersonating aliens. Right. Just this like, is like when serpent. people tell me they go to the psychic to talk to their dead grandmother. Mm-hmm. And I say, well, it's not your grandmother. Your gra- if your grandmother's in hell, she's that's where she's bound. If she's in heaven, she has better things to do. And she's not going to mm-hmm. go against God right. who doesn't want communication between the dead and the living um unless you know it's saintly like our lady or something right, right. but they go well she only she knew this about me oh really mm. who's in the room when you're talking to grandma when she was alive you have a guardian angel at least two of them mm-hmm. and then there's demons that are listening mm-hmm. you know they know things because they're they can creep in when you don't see them uh and now they're impersonating her and you're getting sucked in the same thing would could happen with the idea of these these aliens, these extraterrestrials. And can you imagine, given that Catholics who practice their faith are probably less than a third, mm-hmm. and that understand the fullness of the teachings of the church, probably less than 15%, yeah. uh, and then you take the mass the vast majority of people who don't have any really association with religion, uh, they would gobble this up. Because it would be new and interesting, and the itchy ears would be satisfied. Mm-hmm. Something very phenomenal is taking place. Oh, what are we going to do next? Uh, and you could see how, if there's some kind of an antichrist figure, how this could all be a, a giant uh, duping of the human species. And I would say um, where you start to go down the road is the aliens in their uh, great wisdom because the, the, there's a likelihood they'll be they'll be smarter than humans because they've mm-hmm. evolved more exactly and then they're going to start saying things like well we've we've discovered that god is loves you infinitely regardless of what you do mm-hmm. you can have all your pleasures and he still loves you you don't have to you don't have to be so morally upright because uh that that seems to be some kind of a um a fault that you have that you would be so rigid that God wants you to be free. Oh, you mm-hmm. can just see the language that would flow after exactly. that. Exactly. That's exactly, I think you've, vo- you've voiced precisely what he will say. And he won't immediately start with that. It'll be something so subtle, just like the serpent. Did God really say, it'll be, at first, I don't think it'll seem like an outright blasphemy. But then, the further these communications, however exactly it works, they'll get darker and darker. But the problem is, once you've already began that dialogue, you, you'll have an incredibly difficult time detaching yourself from it. It'll be, it'll be almost impossible for you because you'll be just craving. You'll be ravenous for more of these 
ultra evolved <laughs> teachings that somehow only the Antichrist or the elite in cohorts with him will be able to actually access. They'll be the false prophets of these more evolved beings. And again, speculation here, but it certainly would make sense in keeping with looking at the signs of the times, what they're preparing us for, what is suddenly out of nowhere, dominating these mainstream headlines in the last couple of years. There's all these UFO hearings and everything. And I'm not saying that all these experiences are are made up. I, I, like I acknowledge that they're seeing things that maybe can't be explained, and that's precise. That just lends more more credibility to what I'm saying, which is that these are diabolical phenomena that they're that's going on. Now, tack on to that the possibility that the world is having a severe drought, which could be taking place right now in the next 12 months. Who knows what could happen? That there's a water shortage. That there's a food shortage. Imagine, and so people are already, you know, mm-hmm. kind of terrified that they won't be able to provide for their families. And then imagine if this superior life form shows up and they the opening statement is, um, we worship the one true God as you do, and he has allowed us to come here to help you. And so we're going to uh, desalinize the ocean so you have drinking water. We're going to produce all these crops uh, mm-hmm. very quickly because we have the greater technology. Oh, but people would just be all over it. Exactly. And then they start shifting gears. The one true God, well, who is that? Well, it's, you know, you haven't learned this yet, but this is who he really is. Right. And the people, well, good, he's providing for us. Of course it has to be the real God. Mm-hmm. Yeah, it could be so. And that's what the catechism says, that the Antichrist will come with a, with a supposed solution to mankind's crisis. Exactly. So the first at, is going to be a crisis. Right, exactly, yeah. But let's go to Paul speaking to the Galatians. He said, but even if we or an angel from heaven should preach a gospel other than the one we preach to you, let them be under God's curse. That's about the harshest language you can get from an apostle, Mm -hmm. put somebody under God's curse. So there will be no other gospel. There can be no other gospel. It's all been said. Revelation has been closed, uh, public revelation. Mm -hmm. And uh, this is it. So if anybody comes saying something else, that is the tried and true test that they are an antichrist. Exactly. This, And of course, an angel from heaven wouldn't preach a different gospel, but it, the, he, Paul uses that language because it will seem, that's not arbitrary. The Holy Spirit right. didn't inspire those words for no reason. That's It's in scripture because it's a warning to us that that's exactly what will seem to have happened. And I didn't even think of that, Father, but an angel from heaven, what are we thinking of? What will that kind of look like to the people with itching ears today? Extraterrestrials, maybe. These mm, the more evolved be. beings, these aliens. Yeah. So this this solution, this solution to mankind's problems, which this is, again, also in the catechism, this will come at a price of apostasy from God. And that price will be introduced a little later into their solution. It won't be immediate. But as you said, Father, they'll eventually start to say that they actually know the real revelation of God. Mm-hmm. And if it contradicts the public revelation in anything, we reject it because public revelation is complete. There will never be a new Bible. Uh, so, so we we have to set our minds on this. We have to, as I always say, set our faces like Flint. These are not the times to go trying to reinvent yourself or reinvent your faith. And that's actually another quote lat from last year that got me extremely concerned. This was from a Vatic- uh, some guy in the Vatican, some uh, clergyman in the Vatican. He says, he implied that there's it, probably aliens out there and that discovering them would require us to reread the gospel in light of new science, new data. As soon as anyone tells you, I don't care if he's in the Vatican or or wherever else, that you need to completely reread your faith in light of this new revelation about aliens, that is another enormous danger. Don't ever do that. You don't need to reread your faith. You already have your faith. Trust it. Trust the faith that you know, that you grew up in, that you were given in the Bible and the catechism. Stick with that. A little further into the post, you you mentioned the Ouija board, mm-hmm. and um, same logic and reasoning as with the aliens. If a cardboard board and a piece of plastic starts speaking to you, you have to realize that's not possible. Right, cardboard and plastic don't speak to people. So if something starts spelling something out, that's a rational being, which means you're dealing with a demon here because mm-hmm. God's not going to speak to you through a Ouija board. Right. Uh, but people don't think like that. 
Mm-hmm. They kind and of it, get excited about it. Yeah, it's the excitement. It's the tickling ears, the excitement, the giddiness. Because we're we're bo- we're we're bored by the faith. We're bored by Christ. We're bored by Our Lady's apparitions. Even we want to get our entertainment from all this diabolical stuff. And and I'll I'll say again when when it's when you're just getting some innocent entertainment from watching I don't know, like Star. I mean I'm not I can't say I'm a big fan of this stuff, but Star Wars and Star Trek. I know there's plenty of holy people to watch those things and like it. I'm not really among that group, but then that more other fiction gets really even more dangerous, like Harry Potter and stuff. They're talking about magic. Well, that's evil. There's no such thing as good magic. Don't expose your kids to that. Don't expose yourself to it. This is all part of the same uh, deception where there can be this other source of power that doesn't make natural sense, but it's not God. If there's If there's a source of power that doesn't make natural sense and it's not of God, by process of elimination, guess where it comes from? the demons. There's no other source of power. So we have to be honest with that. And we have to realize when it comes to natural things, we're always dialogue. You know, science itself is a dialogue where we're discoursing, we're considering, we're hypothesizing, testing, observing, all that stuff. And that's all good when it deals with what is naturally reasonable. I'm a big fan of science, of course. But you have to be completely honest with yourself when it starts getting past that and you're dealing with something that is not naturally reasonable. You can very easily tell if it's from God by discerning the fruits of the Spirit and by seeing if it is in keeping with our faith. If it's not, if it's not in keeping with the faith and it bearing the fruits of the Holy Spirit in contradiction to anything, even a detail of the faith, and if it's not naturally explainable, then it is from a demon. We've got to understand that if we want to stay spiritually safe. You know, and when you think about it, uh There's so many programs and movies that are focused on this topic of aliens. Mm -hmm. Um, Star Trek for probably back to the 70s. Um, Star Wars. um, Remember the movie Alien that had several Mm -hmm. things roll out of that. So human beings have been kind of groomed to believe in this stuff for probably five decades at least. And so... To the untrained ear, uh, I would think most people, especially if there's some manifestation in the sky that people will say, well, I saw it. It has to be real. Right. But you don't realize that the demons, especially Satan, he can impersonate God. He can't do it permanently, but for a moment he can he can appear like God. Mm-hmm. You know, he's an angel of light and he can right. deceive. Lucifer. Yeah. When I see possessed people that levitate off the couch in my office uh, – you know, we're suspending natural law. Uh, when they can do that, if they can ele- ele- levitate a person off a couch, they can certainly have some big ship right. float up in the sky and look like it's flying over your country. Mm-hmm. Uh, and I'm not saying these things to get people crazy or get them all wound up or, or nervous. I want to warn people ahead of time if you see something that does not make sense, you have to pause and think logically. We know. Uh, if there's only if we're the only rational people uh, on earth that the Bible says it's it's this is us and no one else, then the, the, what is that thing? Uh, and if they start telling you something that goes contrary to what we know is to be the truth of the gospel, then it's then that, that's a lie, which means that's coming from a bad place, which means that's a demon. Mm-hmm. I mean, it's very easy Keep it to simple. figure yeah. it out, but I think so. People will be so impressed with the phenomenon of the whole thing that they're going to be just gaga over it can you imagine the news the news it generally doesn't favor god to begin with so when you have every station on tv all saying the same message you know we have made contact Mm -hmm. and it's a wonderful thing and we're going to learn so much from these beings Mm -hmm. oh i can just see it playing out already it is. It really is. It's, it's, it's playing out now because of how much expectation, as you said, we've been groomed. And that's the, that's the word I was looking for earlier. As a whole society, oh, a whole we world, ever. we've been groomed. Groomed for Absolutely. It. So it's, it, it's what the, the gospel this morning, I, I hadn't even checked this beforehand, but when I was at Mass, I heard it read, of course, that our Lord admonished us to stay awake. Mm-hmm. If we do not know the hour, he will come. And staying awake, above all, is remaining in a state of grace and pursuing sanctification and all of that. But it's also keeping an eye on the signs of the times in the light of faith and recognizing what deceptions are likely imminent. This, I think, will be perhaps the biggest 
It's going to be the devil's in to try to overflow, overthrow everything with his lying signs and wonders, <laughs> his false marvels, which we know to expect. And in the Gospel of Matthew, let me leave you with this. We're just about out of time. Uh, in the 24th chapter and the 24th verse, this is what it says. It says, for there shall arise false Christs and false prophets and shall grow, show great signs and wonders in so much that if it were possible, they shall deceive the very elect. He's the elect, we're talking about the church, mm -hmm. uh, the hierarchy of the church. Some, even those would be deceived. So, uh, yeah, this is a way, this is a wake up and a warning to humanity. Do not stray from the truth of the gospel. Amen. Thank you so much for coming on. This is Thank so you important. For me. It, so is, it important. really is. Uh, may the blessing of Almighty God come down upon you and remain with you forever. And I bless you in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Amen. Thank you, Daniel. Thank you, Father.